Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to be doing some more AMP today. Specifically, we're going to continue our dive through the bones, and we're going to take a tour through the ethmoid bone today. So, let's get into it. Okay, the ethmoid bone. This one's tricky. Uh, if I could draw a skull, this one would be right between the eyes. The problem is that it's obscured by other bones, and from every aspect, it's tough to see this. So one of the best ways, I think, of talking about ethmoid is just to take it out of the skull completely and look at it unarticulated from everything else. So let's go through some basic rules, structures about the ethmoid bone. So it does, like I said, it's hard to see this one from nearly any aspect because it's so deeply covered by other tissue and other bones. The word comes from an old Greek word that means something like strainer-like or sieve-like. It must have, because it's named like that, some holes in it somewhere. And unfortunately, those aren't very visible from where we see them, but we will see them in a minute. It is T-shaped if you want to get kind of fancy with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this bone like a T. And the perpendicular plate is that part there sticking down. So all of this here that I'm drawing there, that's the perpendicular plate. In the actual image of the bone over here, I can circle it in yellow pretty obviously. If the perpendicular plate is that, you know, that vertical part of the T, the cribriform plate will represent the horizontal part of the T. So I'm going to put CP here for cribriform plate, and it would be somewhere about right in here-ish. Now it's hard to see in this image where the cribriform plate is, but notice how it's perpendicular to the perpendicular plate, where it got that name from. Now, the little shark fin sticking up top, just like I've drawn like there, this is called the CG, the Krista Gali, the Krista Gali. And in the actual image, to the left, you can see that shark fin poking up pretty simply. So there's the Christagali. Some of the meninges of the brain will attach to there. When we get to our brain talks, I'll revisit the Christagali. Now, the nasal conchae, they could also be called turbinate bones or turbinal bones. And I'm going to show you that on, I think, the next slide uh, or the next one after that. But let me help you with these because these are a little bizarre for people to see. First of all, let's go to my T drawing. And what I can do is I can put like some big old dangly earrings hanging off of it. And I can go on this side and put some big old dangly earrings there. There's the superior. I'll put soup in here and soup in there. So we see and those are the superior turbinate bones or the superior turbinals, also known as the nasal conchae. And those would be somewhere like this, if I could draw them here in red. There... And there, these big, lumpy, gaudy earrings hanging down from our cribriform plate, those would be the superior nasal conchae. Now, you would think that the other things dangling down would be the inferiors, but they're not. So here, kind of looks like a teardrop. And here, which kind of looks like a teardrop, those are the middle nasal conchae. So if I were to draw them in, I would draw them like this and like this, so I can see them. These are the middles. Right? They're not the inferiors. The inferiors are considered to be their own separate pair of facial bones. Okay, calvarium removed. Where's the ethmoid bone in this image? Well, it's right here. And that's all you can see of it. It looks to me like an oval-shaped something with holes poked in it. And then here is some very skinny structure that I can't really see from that aspect, but I bet it's that Christagali thing sticking up out of the top. So that's all we can see. So this is the cribriform plate, and that's all we can see of it there. So it doesn't look like a T from this aspect at all. This is the superior aspect with the calvarium removed. Cribriform plate is perforated, that means poked with holes, and those holes are called olfactory foramina, which is the plural for foramen. So those are the olfactory foramina. 
If you know what the word olfactory refers to, it has to do with the sense of smell. So at some point when we get to the nervous system, we'll see some nerve fibers that are running through uh, those olfactory foramina. They're running through, they're perforating the cribriform plate where they can attach to larger nerve structures inside of the brain. Christigali again, is this thing sticking up? It doesn't look like what it looked like before. Now it kind of looks like a shark's fin. If I could outline it on this picture, it's very narrow. And if I could poke my finger on it, it's quite pointy. So the Christigalli is protruding up toward you like a shark's fin, and it's going to allow you to attach parts of the brain covering known as the meninges, especially the tough one known as the dura mater. From the front, again, it's hard to see this bone if it's not by itself. So right over here in orange, and I see a piece of it here in orange, and a piece of it in the shadow part orange, that's the tips of the cribriform plate. That's where the T would go, but it's behind the head here. It's behind these nasal bones, so you can't see it. So there is the cribriform plate in this aspect. Right, and you can only, again, you can just see the tips of it peeking out behind there. If I go down here, I can see this perpendicular plate, right? No problem. And we notice it's forming this wall that separates the nose into its two nasal areas. So this wall here that separates the two nostrils, if you will, is called the nasal septum. Septum is a great word for wall. So the perpendicular plate forms the superior portion of the nasal septum, where I've outlined in red over there. The inferior portion is formed by this kind of plow-shaped bone called the vomer. Now, the vomer is officially a facial bone, and we'll talk about that in the facial bone section. But there's the vomer and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone forming the nasal septum. That's a question on quite a lot of standardized exams. Name the two bones that form the bony nasal septum. It's ethmoid and vomer. All right, on either side of that perpendicular plate, you will notice there's a teardrop and there's a teardrop. What are those? Well, those are the middle nasal conchae. Those are the middle ones. Where's the superiors? Well, they're buried up in here and we can't see them. And it looks something like that, if I can complete my little picture. So again, this one's tough to see unless it's separated from the other bones. Don't be confused by these little green boogers down here. Those are facial bones also. So let's take a peek at the bottom part of our talk down here where it talks about these nasal conchae more. So we have a superior, that's part of the ethmoid bone. We have the middles, that's those little teardrop shapes of the ethmoid bones. Those are great, but we also have some inferior ones. And again, those are considered to be a pair of facial bones and they're a separate bone from the ethmoid. They're not part of the ethmoid. There's little green boogers hanging out right above the vomer there in that nasal cavity. What are the conche for? Well, first remember they're also called turbinates or turbinal bones. Different books, different professors talk about these in different ways. But no matter what their name is, they are always for increasing surface area, for warming and humidifying the air as it's breathed in and sent down to the lungs. On this image over here, we can see the, let me change my color to yellow so we can see it more clearly. Right up here, this would be the superior nasal conche, part of the ethmoid bone. These are the middle nasal conche, the teardrops hanging down, uh, part of the ethmoid bone. And then the bottom ones are the inferior ones, but they are their own separate pair of facial bones, not considered part of the ethmoid, but need to be talked about at the same time. All right, if you enjoyed some ethmoid, Come back for the next one, and we'll do a sphenoid bone together. All right. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.